Megan, tell me about your dad's comic shop. So my dad has run a small comic book shop, um, completely online, run out of our basement. It's called Panther Hollow Comics. We've been running it since I was in middle school. Um, I don't know what year that is, uh, but he, it, it's his side gig. He's always wanted to do it. Um, he actually has been a pharmacist and now is um, in corporate for Rite Aid um, for his whole career, but his dream was always to run a comic book shop and he finally was able to do that a couple years ago. Um, every time I tell people that we have a shop, I was like, oh, where is it? Where is it? And I'll have to be like, oh, well, you know, it's online. And they're like, oh, well, that's not as cool. And I'm like, but, you know, we have 100,000 comic books in our basement. So, you know, that kind of counts for something, right? My, my dad has always been an avid collector. I have inherited that from him. Um, but he had a large collection to begin with. My entire life, he's loved to read comic books and he's read me comic books. And um, it got to a point where my mom came to him and she was like, Brandon, you have too many comic books. And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, you have to either find some way to keep up with it or you have to get rid of them. And he was like, all right, I'll do this. Um, and so he, it began by, we were just kind of, you know, hey, it was family friends and, you know, our comic book friends because we went to the shop way too much. Um, and uh, we would just say, hey, you know, we'll get your weekly issues, we'll pick them up, we'll ship them to you, and, you know, you give us a small fee and we'll kind of act as like a DoorDash thing for comic books. And um, it ended up going so well that we just kept buying stock and we had this whole collection and um, eventually we started doing... Um, auctions on Facebook Live and we would set it up we have a whole little like studio thing in our basement and we would put my dad's phone on the tripod and I would sit behind the camera with the dogs and um, and he would run this auction um, where people would bid on it and um, I would write down you know who got what and for what price and we would put it in a separate bin and then we would we always did um, like a drawing for a free book um, and I would, that was always my favorite part, especially when I was younger, because I would get to be on camera and I would get to come up with the little bowl that I had folded every sticky note into and pull out a name. And then I went back to my little corner and sat back down. But um, unfortunately, when I went to college, uh, it, it did become a little too much for him to do on his own. And so we don't do the auctions anymore, but we are still selling books. I have had a number of odd jobs over the years, um, and one of them was working for the comic book shop. But I, there was a point where <laughs> I asked my dad, I was like, hey dad, why can't I just, you know, be an official employee? Can I get like a paycheck instead of you paying me in comic books and like a $20 bill every week? <laughs> and he was like, what, you got a problem with that? I was like, a little bit, you know, I kind of want money. Um, and he was like, well, here's the thing. I, if I bring you on as an employee, I'm going to have to pay taxes on you. And that was the conversation that I, that's the only reason I know anything about taxes is because he had to sit me down and tell me, hey, I'm not going to actually hire you because I don't want to pay taxes for an employee. Um, so that was, that was a fun conversation with him. Panther Hollow has been vendors for multiple Comic Cons over the years. Um, we started going to Comic Cons just as participants um, and I loved it. Um, and then after the shop got a little bit bigger, we started to rent out booths and we would go and sell our books. And I actually got an opportunity to sell a lot of prints for my art, um, which was really, really cool. Um, but the best thing about Comic Cons, I think, is the cosplays. Um, my dad and I used to use EVA foam and a heat gun and make armor and then we would go to comic cons and enter cosplay contests and actually in 2019 we won the Harrisburg, Co uh, Harrisburg cosplay comic con contest in whatever order those words are <laughs> um, and that was really cool I got to dress up as x23 I made the helmet and the suit myself and uh, uh, my dad dressed up as Wolverine old band Logan um, and we, we ended up winning and uh, our booth got a lot of attention that year which was really really cool um, I almost, I actually, my claws were 3D printed and I almost didn't get through weapons check because they were too sharp. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I love Comic Cons and I wish that COVID would go away so I can go back to them. Um, but unfortunately that is not happening right now. Um, 
could you tell me a little bit about your dad's diagnosis? Yeah, so um, uh, when the shop started, we didn't know about it, but about five or six years ago, my dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And that was really, when I, when I found out, I was, you know, I was in middle school. I didn't really understand what it was. Um, and I just was kind of like, um, I remember asking my mom, I was like, is dad going to die? And she was like, well, no, no, this isn't a fatal thing. It's just something we can't fix. And I was like, oh, well, that's fine. Right? Like, well, uh, no. Um, he, my dad is a, is a very strong person. And I wish every day that I could be more like him. Because he wakes up every morning and he is in such terrible pain. And you can't tell. He would never let you know. Um, but he is, he, it, it became more difficult for him over the years. Um, his, part of what Parkinson's is, is it makes you shaky and it makes your muscles really not respond correctly. Um, and so when we, you know, bag and board books or we are, are doing inventory or sorting things, it, it's hard for him sometimes to use his hands. And that is really frustrating for him. Um, and it, it's, it's really hard for me to see because, you know, I love the guy. Um, and basically he just can't keep up with it anymore um so again when i moved away he just there were a number of things that he just can't do um but he you know he does not let it stop him he is the same the same guy that's always been my dad you know and that i really admire that about him i like to think that i'm a lucky individual you know not a lot of people have the relationship that I have with my dad. And I, so I've taken that for granted over the years, I have. Um, but ever since I was a little girl, we've had a really close connection. And this comic book thing has been one of the things that holds it together. It's a shared interest that we have that I just, you know, really reminds me of him, really draws me to him. And um, when I went to college, I felt like, you know, especially when I, I, when I got home for Thanksgiving break, my dad told me that we were selling per for the shop and I cried <laughs> and he was like well it's not a big deal it's not I was like, but it's a big deal to me you know because this is this is my daddy daughter thing you know and uh I uh I really felt like part of that connection was I was like what do we do now you know I I, I want to talk to my dad I want to I want to be with him but I just I can't I'm six hours away you know I, and um but recently I, when I got to college I started playing Magic the Gathering with some friends and um like I said my dad's a collector so when I got home I was like dad you gotta check out this really cool game, you're gonna love it. And he was like, I don't know, I don't think I wanna get into something right now. And I was like, no, trust me, you're gonna love it. And uh, lo and behold, I come back for Christmas break, and he's like, Megan, I've got all these cards, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick your ass. And I'm like, Dad, you can't say that to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> and uh, and uh, sure enough, he, he kicked my ass, um, and he's fully invested in it, and he's like, you get a better deck. And I'm like, Dad, I'm a college student, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's been, that has been something really exciting that's been uh, bringing us back together a little bit, I think. And it just, you know, lets me know that just because, you know, the shop's not completely there as it was, you know, we still, I still have that with him. And I still have, you know, whatever energy we share with that excitement. Yeah. My dad has one tattoo and it is all the way down his bicep. And it is the Panther logo that I made in middle school. And, um, and I told him over the years, I said, Dad, that's not a good logo. It's way too complicated. I poured my heart into this thing. It's a great piece. It's not a logo. Um, and he said, nope, I want it. I'm going to put it on a giant banner, and I'm going to tattoo it on my arm. And I was like, okay. Um, and so he has it, and um, it, it just, I remember, I didn't know he was getting it, and he, I, I don't even remember how I found out, but I think it was when he came home, and he was like, it's our like first sessions done. I was like, what? Mom let you do that? You know, like what? And um, but it is the coolest thing. And every time like he I think he purposefully started wearing more tank tops after that because he wants people to see it. But no, it's huge, it's color, and it's there, and I love it. Awesome. Oh my gosh. I would definitely ask you if you have anything else, but we are running out of time. So <laughs> no worries, no worries. Thank you so much. Of course, yeah. Um, that that's awesome. Yep.